with an engine failure, whether it's a real one or a simulated engine failure, you want to remember your A, B, C. A is airspeed, which would be best glide. B would be the best place to land, not just where you're going to land, but what direction you're going to land, obviously into the wind. And then C would be your checklist. There's going to be two checklists for an engine failure in flight, or I should say there's an engine failure in flight checklist and then a forced landing checklist if the engine failure in flight checklist doesn't restart your engine. Now, in most light singles, best glide speed is going to look like your nose is just below the horizon. Of course, every plane has the best glide speed, and you want to use that, that speed. But a little trick, if you trim almost all the way nose up and take your hands off the controls, in almost every light single out there, you're going to be at best glide speed. And here we are. About 65 statute miles an hour in the 150. And as you can see over the nose, that nose is just slightly below the horizon. When you identify where you're going to land, the technique that I like to use is we are going to make a beeline for the departure end of that runway. So if you spot runway 14, the departure end of 14 is where we want to circle down. So I'm going to make a beeline for the departure end of 14. And I'm going to get my checklist out and read my checklist. One of the little techniques that I also teach is have your emergency checklist set up um, facing when you pull the checklist out. So it's right there. So the engine failure in flight, airspeed 65, carb heat on, primer in and locked, fuel shutoff valve on, mixture full rich, and then ignition switch in the start position or in the both position and uh, start, uh, move it to the start position if the prop is stuck. If that doesn't restart the engine, we're going to continue with our best glide speed, pull the mixture to the idle cutoff position, turn off the fuel, turn off the ignition switch, the flaps down the as required, turn the master switch off. Unlatch the doors prior to touchdown, and um, come in slightly tail low, and apply brakes after you touch down. Here, block, sir. 2,500 feet in a light single, or maybe 2,000 feet at the departure end of the air runway you're going to land on, you want to turn your crosswind leg. Most of these light single trainers will lose about 500 feet every time you do a 360. So if you circle down to 1,500 feet, that's when you would turn your crosswind. In a heavier single, like an Arrow or a Cherokee 6, you're going to uh, start your crosswind turn at about 2,000 feet. So we're at 1,500 feet. We're not quite at the departure into 1-4, but close enough. We're going to turn crosswind. 75, you number 2, runway 1-4, clear touch go. Number 2, clear touch go of 1-4, 75. That's 2 5 Bullock, I'll your right side there, Seth, enter and down, just follow him for a minute down your foot. Traffic inside, Wilco, 254. X346, right down one. X346, there's one turning the left base out there. Uh, the goal here uh, is to be a beam the numbers at approximately just pattern just altitude, right just follow traffic. or about 1,000 feet off the ground. Downwind inside, that's base turn as well. If you're a little bit low, that's okay. You would just turn your base a little bit sooner. If you're a little bit high, that's okay. You'd rather be too high than too low, but either one of those can work out. You just turn base out of you, you're number three. You just turn when it's appropriate based on what your altitude is. Three six uniforms, the beam, the one four. Look out to the left side, there's Seth on the opposite down, and you're going to follow that drive it. We are looking for traffic, and we'll follow him on the opposite side. And so now we're approaching a position where we're a beam, the approach end of one four. And we're at about 900 feet, so we're a little bit low, but that's okay. We'll just turn base accordingly. Okay, so here we are, beam the numbers at 900 feet. And the only thing I have left to do now is remain within glide distance of the runway. When you put your flaps down is really a matter of technique, but I'm going to go ahead and put in 10 degrees of flaps here. Lower the nose just a little bit so I don't lose air speed. 75, stay on the down and follow serious about a three mile final report in sight. At my key point here, which is a 45-degree angle off the end of the runway, I'm going to make a right turn. Just watch your out of here. 
I'm going to leave my flaps at 10 degrees for now, because right I don't want to overcommit my flaps. And on the normal base leg, you want to be between five and 700 feet above ground level, as a reference. Two five four, take it runway now. Just keep the turn final square for me. Two five four, we'll go. Uh, Seventy five, drive head to your left. Got a turn final here. Next three forty six, start left, Crosswind. Crosswind three four six. And Craig Towers, zero three two, and Papa Mike, uh, be advised, uh, ADIS is reporting three zero one eight for the altimeter. Roger. And on short final, when I know that I can make it to the runway with full flaps, especially if I'm going to be landing uh, not on a runway or a nice road, right maybe up there, you see a, uh, have a rougher Look landing, traffic, maybe in the bushes or trees or whatever, we want to be touching down as slow as possible. So we're going to go ahead and put the flaps down to 30 degrees. And I like to practice this to touch down right at the very end of the runway in case I have to put this thing into the Walmart parking lot. What's your direction, Be part of the south. And as you can see, we landed real short on runway 14.